no one will be that eternal priestly bride, but she who has made herself ready. For the battle is raging, the devil is raging. I don't want to be sleeping while the battle is raging. But my spirit is willing, but my flesh gets tempted. Rise up my soul and stop praying. Welcome back to the Brenda Price Ministries podcast. We just finished up a series of the Eternal Unveiling, which was really good with evangelist Brenda Price. We're now moving on into a series on the groaning creation. Now, this was a revelation that was received by evangelist Brenda Price during a time of being shut away with the Lord during a 21-day fast. Um, I tell people often that the revelations that are received, that you're hearing over these podcasts or that you read about in the books, are received through a time and within a time of suffering. It seems that God puts us through a preparation period um, which pushes us further into seeking Him and His will, His desire, His heart. I've heard of so many instances where God used the greatest times of suffering in order to birth something dynamic in the spiritual realm. Uh, Often we don't grow very much in good times, but uh, during times of suffering is usually where we deepen our roots and uh, strengthen ourselves. But before we get into our new series, The Groaning Creation, uh, I would like to tell you about what's going on on BrendaPriceMinistries.com. Weebly.com. We're expanding and continuing to expand the resources we have available uh, via the internet. We know that some of you are listening from overseas, and the strongest contact you have with the ministry is over the internet. So we try to make as many resources available as we can. One of the things that we have just recently started is uh, a testimony page. You can go to brendapriceministries.weebly.com, and on our website there, there is a link to our testimonies page. There you can share how the Lord has used this ministry to bless your life, to encourage others. Also, on the website, we have our Brenda Price Ministries bookstore, where you can find all the books that Brenda Price has authored, and some of her audio sermons for sale on there as well. Also, through the internet, we are using the various social networks to communicate the gospel, and this message of repentance and intimacy with the Lord through Brenda Price Ministries on YouTube, the Brenda Price Ministries page on Facebook. All these resources are made available to you, uh, and we offer, we're offering more and more for free at cost, including this podcast. On our YouTube page, something that I'm personally excited about, we have just started a Students of Revival playlist. Uh, this is, I believe, will prove a valuable resource to those who are pressing in for a real move of God in their area. The problem with most of the church today is we have not looked back on our history or even recent history to see the, the forerunners, the pioneers of various moves of God, the ingredients, if you will, that caused the Lord to come down and touch people um, in, a, in a major way. These, this playlist is uh, very exciting to me because through it, you will learn lessons that uh, a lot of the church has neglected or ignored or just has not been educated on, whatever the reason. So if you go to YouTube, our YouTube page at Brenda Price Ministries, you will find that playlist. And along with some of the recent videos or podcasts or sermons that we have put on YouTube, again, these are all things that are in the works We're continuing to expand more and more as time goes by. And we thank you all for your encouragement and prayers as we continue to expand in these areas. 
So now we want to go right into this first part uh, of the Groaning Creation series. The title we would give to this first episode, I believe, would be Why We Yearn. So I want you to pay attention as Evangelist Brenda Price puts into perspective the deeper longings we have in our spirits and what God's purpose is in putting within each of us a yearning desire. So we pray that you're edified as you listen. Every yearning comes from a memory base. You can't yearn for something you have no memory base for. You can't crave something you have no memory base for. There, there has to be something in your spirit that craves or yearns something that you have a memory of having tasted. And if it's not something that you've naturally tasted, then it goes back to eternal memory, to where you were in the presence of God as a created being when God first created you. And his original intent for you was placed in you at that moment. And even if you never experienced it and don't have a memory of experiencing it here on earth, you have an eternal memory DNA that yearns for that original intent of why God created us and brought us into being. And so we keep getting to these impasses in our life where we can go so far on the initial things that we see around us and then it quits pleasing us and and you go one way or another when we when we have no paradigm of fulfillment of pleasure we we turn to pleasure for fulfillment is the main thing that that our nation goes through because most nations their fulfillment is to fill their stomach or to fill their their rest or to fulfill their safety and they're caught up in that In our nation, it's to fulfill our pleasure. And we walk away when that yearning starts. It's it's what the Lord told me in my book, Groaning Creation, that there's a groaning that the earth is going through and that creation is going through right now. And because Satan recognizes that yearning, he seeks to fulfill it or distract us with the false fulfillments of that yearning. Yearning has a purpose. Yearning has a design. God is intentional. Nothing about God is unintentional. God is not, uh, Terry Bennett says, God is not um, random. God is not random. He's always purposeful. He's always intent on a achievement. And so the way God draws human beings to that uh, desire to be fulfilled or to be filled with comes from a memory bank locked inside of our DNA, if not something that's already been initiated while on earth. Many times in our past, we have an initiated point of time where we feel the pull of the Spirit. We feel God's fullness. We're so full at that moment. We cry, we weep. My dad tells a story about his cousin who, as far as he knows, backslid unless she came back to the Lord. But they tell a story about her down at the altar when she was feeling the fullness of God actually levitating. But the fullness of God, and I've heard this before, the God above is pulling, they're being pulled away from the earth beneath in that manifestation of fulfillment. And that she actually was on her knees but above the ground. She didn't know it because she was lost in his presence. But she, everybody else around her saw her actually pull up from the ground. And I've heard of this before in other cases. And so when, when we have a groaning and a yearning in our spirit, it's God calling to us. And when we learn that the distractions of the world don't meet that, if we learn that, we become wise. If we don't learn that, we, we're stupid. We're ignorant before God, and we're going to be guilty before God. We have to recognize the yearning as a call. Come, come closer. That's why I like that song. Child, come close. See who I am. 
because we forget. We forget in the times of absence of his presence. The reason he pulls his presence back many times, it's double fold. One is to bring us closer for us to, to exercise our spiritual um, rights and abilities to draw closer to him. The other one is to test the soul to see if you're going to follow that, no matter whether you feel it, feel it or not. He always meets our hunger when we don't stop, when we keep continually seeking to fulfill that. Through Him. Through Him. But more Him through us, Terry Bennett says. It's not about me living for Him. It's about Him living through me. He says there's two sides to this road. There's two ditches on each side of this road. The one that says everything's already done and the one that says I have to be this religious or this he said no we've got to be surrendered. It's Christ in us the hope of glory. We can never attain or come up to that but we can surrender to that and become that. We don't become that because we meet a stand, natural standard but yet we do. Because the natural standard speaks to everyone about what's internal. The external does speak of that. But that's not the intent. My intent of being humble, I'm not intentionally buying the crummiest car on the lot to prove I'm humble. But I will buy the crummiest car on the block because intentionally I know that's what God wants right now. And I'm surrendered to His will. You see what I'm saying? There's a difference. And if God, what God wants is, is the expensive car, for whatever reason, then I comply to that. But because I'm complied, it doesn't matter which car I buy in my heart because he's living in me. But and if I'm you're not him. surrendered, then it matters very much which car you buy, whether right. you're getting the more expensive one or you're getting the right dirt cheap one to look humble. Right. Either one can be intentionally wrong. But when Christ is living in us, and we're, that's why the false looks so close to the real, because it plays out the same. There's false humility and there's true humility. So that's a valid point. This podcast has been a production of Brenda Price Ministries. Evangelist Brenda Price has more materials available on this subject, including her most recent book titled The Eternal Unveiling. It can be found at our website, along with other resources we have made available. The website can be found at brendapriceministries.weebly.com.